Introducing the brand new Denon DJ Prime Series. We've got a new refined look, bigger screens, bigger jog wheels. We're gonna take a closer look. Let's check it out. Welcome back, Jamie Hartley here from Crossfader. And as you can probably tell, I'm not in our usual setting. I'm actually out in Fort Lauderdale in the USA at the Denon DJ In Music Experience Center checking out the brand new Prime Series from Denon DJ. Now I'm really excited to be here and I'm really excited to show you these brand new products. You've all been asking for certain updates from the SC5000s and I think we're gonna see where Denon have delivered in this video. What you're gonna learn in this video is all the new features that are available on the SC6000 and the SC6000M compared to the previous versions. And we've got here the X1850 mixer, which we're going to look at as well. We're also going to deep dive into all of the features that are available as standard and the engine OS that is inside these units, which make these absolute powerhouses. As always, please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff to help us keep making more videos just like this. At the end of this video, I'm going to give my opinions on these products, where they sit in the industry, and obviously the prices of them as well. So stick around. I wanna hear your thoughts at the end too in the comments. Let's take a closer look at the new Prime series. So if you're already aware of what the SC5000s have to offer, then I'm just gonna briefly run through what is new on the SC6000s. So here we have a much bigger screen. It's 10.1 inches. And honestly, in person, it is literally like having an iPad sat there on top of your player. It is super bright. It's super responsive and tactile. You know, this is something that I wasn't sure how I was going to sort of perceive it when I was stood in front of it. I've se I'd seen pictures of it before this, but honestly, it looks amazing, especially compared to the previous one. It's taking center stage and it looks great. We've also got bigger jog wheels here. The jog wheels are now 8.5 inches and they've actually been redefined from the inside as well. The jog wheel adjust has been changed too. So rather than it clicking to different increments, we've got much finer adjustments to change that all important tension of how tight or loose the jog wheel is. And honestly, again, feeling it, it feels much, much nicer. I, I personally prefer this to the SC5000s and I think this is a big improvement from Den and DJ right here. As you're probably aware as well, the look of this unit has changed quite drastically. I'm welcoming this nice new sleek black look. We've got things like the browse pot here and the loop knob replaced. We've got the silver um, jog wheel, the edge of the jog wheels changed to black now. It looks much sleeker. And also the performance pads. Now this is one of the big ones. I love this nice new minimalistic look. Um, it just ties in so much nicer and I feel like this will look the part in pro DJ booths around the world now. Underneath this unit, we've actually got a built-in SATA hard drive bay now. So if you want to store your music internally on the hard drive in the player, then you've got that option now on the SC6000. Lastly, we've got a locking IEC on the back. So, you know, there's not going to be any point where the cable's going to get ragged out and the player's going to turn off. But if you don't have a locking IEC in the back, then there is still that battery power in there to quickly get the power cable back in, like on the SC5000s. Now moving over to the SC6000M. It's still got all the same updates that I've mentioned about the SC6000. However, you'll notice now we've got an 8.5 inch vinyl on top. And you know, this is a really cool thing. It's got a quick release function. So all I need to do is click this, and the vinyl pops straight off. You'll also get a washer included when you get the product. If you are a scratch DJ that wants something much looser, then you can put the washer on. And all you need to do is literally click this back down and it locks in place. Now we've got a nice a loose jog wheel that will continue spinning. One more thing I just want to personally point out about the SC6000M is that on the previous model, on the 5000, you had the slope coming down from the edge of the platter. And this sometimes just frustrated me a little bit if I'm scratching, maybe it caught my little finger. Now we've got this nice profile where it cuts straight down and it just feels so much nicer to scratch and do beat juggling on and all those turntablist tricks. It feels way nicer on this style of um, platter now with these, the edges, the profiles going straight down. Just like a real turntable, we've got the motor mode where the vinyl will move around, but you've got finger grooves on the side. So if what you want to mix to music as you are using a normal turntable, you can drag on the side and you've got some really nice tension here. 
You've also got the talk adjust, so you've got normal and high. So depending on what style of Scratch DJ you are and what kind of talk you want, you've now got that option there to change. So there we have the updated features on the players, the 6000M and the 6000. Now, personally, the first thing I thought when I saw these players in the press release and then in person was that Den and DJ had listened to everything that people had said about the SC 5000s, um, all the little qualms or quirks they had with them. Straight away, I noticed that change. And th honestly, the look and feel of them to DJ on, it, it, it feels much nicer to walk up to and actually perform on. Regardless of all the amazing technology that's inside it, a big part of DJing is just using the equipment and being able to mix music and feel good about doing it. And that updated look and feel really shines through. I you know, love the way that these look now and I think it's gonna make a big difference to where we see these products and what booths we see them in. Now we're gonna take a closer look at specifically the SC6000 and all of the features that it has to offer. We're gonna look at the performance features, the library management, the screens, everything that's inside this unit. All DJs need some of these essential features. So on the SC6000, we've got nice tactile Q and play buttons. These are a plastic and rubber composite. They feel nice, they've got a good click to them. The jog wheel is nice and large. We've got this outer LED ring, which can actually be changed by the colors. So we can go here and you can see we tap this, we can change the colours to your personal preference. You can show your logo in the centre of the display or artwork. You've got the playhead position and then also we've got the wheel adjust which I mentioned earlier which is it's really nice. You can really fine tune this jog wheel to your personal preference and the actual physical tension that you get when adjusting the jog wheel. You'll notice on heavy, it comes to a stop on light got a nice loose tension there. The tempo adjust and pitch fader is full size. We've got this wide plus and minus eight range that we can change using shift and then the pitch bend buttons which can go from 4% to 8%, 10%, 20%, 50%, even to 100%. And inside Engine OS in this unit, it's got really capable time stretching technology. So if you were to stretch it right down, it's still going to sound very clean. So if you're making big transitions, moving between different genres, you're able to stretch these tracks now without damaging too much of the dynamics and the quality of the music. Above the tempo adjust, you'll notice we've got the key lock button here, we've got the sync button, so you can sync up to four decks, um, whether it be the decks you've got on multiple layers that the players have to offer, or even just four players themselves. We've got the vinyl button on and off, so when vinyl is turned off, if you use the top of the jog wheel, it just nudges rather than scratches. Vinyl mode on. We've got the scratch mode. Just above that, we have stop time. So if I paused it here, for example, it takes much longer for the track to come to a halt, and it starts immediately. If I pause it when it's on fast, you've got an instant start stop. Over on the other side, we have the usual track skip buttons to skip through a playlist, and we've got beat jump buttons. So while the track's playing, you could choose to beat jump through the song, and the beat jump works on whatever parameter you've got set on the loop encoder. So if we've got 32 beats there, we can jump 32 beats forward or 32 beats back. This is great for mixing in phrase if you want to extend intros or maybe even shorten your intros and get to the point a bit quicker or get into the mix a bit quicker. It's nice to be able to do that right here on the unit. Moving up, I just mentioned about the loop encoder. What you can do is choose a length. It shows up in the center display here and on the display on the screen here. Click the loop encoder in to set that loop. You can move that loop by holding shift and then clicking the loop encoder left and right and you'll see that it moves on the overview waveform as well as on the scrolling waveform too. We also have a manual in and out adjust as well. So we can set a manual loop by hitting the in button and out button. You can change those positions. If you want to change the in point, you can press in and use the jog wheel to change that position. Same with the out. Great for build-ups and creating tight loops like this. To undo, undo the loop, just click the loop encoder again. Just under the loop encoder, we've got a sensor button which will mom momentarily reverse the song. And you'll notice the second, the bottom half of the scrolling waveform continues playing. And it's a top half that scrolls back. And you can see where you are in the track for when you let go, it will jump back in. And that works the same with slip mode. So when slip mode is on, we can do anything to the track. Let me just stop it, for example, so you can see 
that scrolling waveform underneath, and then when we let go, it jumps back to where it would have been previously. This is great for on the fly, momentary creative tricks. Now looking at the performance pads on the bottom of the unit. So we've got hot cue mode, loop mode, roll mode, slicer, and then if we hold shift and press slicer, we also have slicer loop as well. So let's look at them briefly. These eight performance pads along the bottom feel great. They're really nice tactile rubber pads. And as you can see, when I click them, we've got this nice little light that pops up. You can color code hot cues within the engine software on your laptop. So let's just have a listen and set up some different hot cues. You can see all the colors there. We can jump to different points in the track. And then you can delete by holding shift and tapping each pad again. Loop mode will do an auto loop from the point that you press it first to the point that you press it again. So for example, if I set up a loop here, that's the start of my loop. And then if we press it again, it then saves that in the bank of loops. And we can have up to eight saved loops here. Now I really want to point out that in the engine software, you can transfer, or even if you plug your USB device in that uses the Rekordbox uh, library, if you've got a load of music organized in Rekordbox, it can transfer any loops you've got saved into this bank and any hot cues you've got saved into that bank as well. Also, if you use Serato or Tractor, you can transfer those hot cues and loops within the engine software on your laptop too. If you want to recall a loop at any point, the track can be playing. We can undo that loop by clicking the encoder and you can just tap that pad at any point and it will jump back. Tap it again, and we can deactivate the loop. Next mode, we have roll. Here we've got different length rolls, and you can see them on the screen here. So at the top, we've got two beats, and what that will do, will loop the track for two beats until you let go. Just like slip mode, we see where we are in the song. When we let go, we've got one beat, triplets, half, half triplets, quarter, quarter triplets, and an eighth. So you can get really creative just on the fly with build-ups like this. You could... And then the track drops in. So you can see how powerful just a performance feature like that and having the triplets in there works really nice. Moving on to Slicer, you'll notice the pads light up across the eight beats that the track's playing and it toggles across the pads on the bottom. So if we hold any of these pads now, it will roll that beat. We can change the length of that roll using these two arrows here. These are parameter buttons that we can then drop down, for example. We've now got a quarter beat. Again. And we can go back up to one beat in length. If we hold shift and press slicer, it will create a slicer loop. So it will stay in that position and just keep going back over those eight beats and then we can chop it up again. And there we have some really nice tactile performance features available on the SC6000 Prime. It's also worth noting on the loop performance pad, if we press it for a second time, we go into the auto beat loop and you can see the lengths on the screen. So we've got all the way from 32 beats down to a quarter beat. So if the track's playing, we can automatically just activate a one beat loop and chop that down or deactivate it. It's really nice to be able to see all these on the screen right here, nice and clear. And if we toggle the loop button again, we're going back to our saved loops. And obviously you can color code them again in the software and name them in the software too. Let's now dive into the Engine OS. Now this is an operating system that is inside of these players. And this big screen gives you a lot of access to all of the library options, all of your music management, being able to access streaming services and much more. And that's because of the Engine OS that's inside. It can do multiple things uh, and it's, it runs across the whole ecosystem of Denon. And yeah, it's very, very powerful. So let's look at some music management options and library options in here. So if we touch this button, for example, here. This is our crates. So you can have crates in there. You can scroll up and down. It's very intuitive. It's like using an iPad. You can swipe to load a song. If we go back, you can swipe left to prepare a song. And we have a prepare playlist here. So you can quickly access different tracks you know that you maybe don't want to play next, but later on in the night, you can access them there by preparing them. A really neat feature that I just want to draw your attention to within this engine OS is that we can actually preview songs on maybe a separate layer. So 
let's say for example we've got a track playing we can choose a song that we want to queue up next but rather than load it into the player we can just check if we want to actually play it and check that song out so we can just tap the album artwork um, and then let me go into another layer tap the album artwork and you can skip through that song and it will play through the headphones without you having to actually load the song now you'll notice as well there's a theater mode so if i accidentally put that fader up it stops that track playing so you don't accidentally have the track playing out loud for everyone to hear so that's a really really neat feature to have right here in the engine os something else that's really powerful is that we can actually create our own playlist by clicking this button here and then we can go create playlist let me just type in um, test create and then we can actually select tracks and just drag them across to our playlist this is amazing. This just shows how powerful having an OS inside the player really is. Being able to drag and drop things across the screen, it blows my mind. And it means that we don't have to keep going back to our laptop. Something, a, a gripe of mine is if I'm preparing um, a set, I don't want to have to play around on the equipment, figure out what tracks I want to play, and then have to go back to a laptop to put them in an order or put them in a playlist. I want to be able to play on the equipment and manage the music on the equipment so that you know, I can curate my set on the go as well. So that's, that's something that I'm really impressed with. And obviously, as you can see, you can create folders as well and drag playlists into folders. And yeah, super powerful. Now, we all know that in this day and age, we are moving towards streaming. I bet you probably listen to more music through a streaming service than download music. Now, obviously, if you've been a long time DJ, you will have been building your music library up for a while. But if you're new to DJing, you probably don't own that much music. However, you will be exploring streaming services. And this is where these players are super powerful as well. They have Wi-Fi connectivity and wired internet connectivity. So you can connect these to the internet, simply toggle and log in to streaming services. Now, currently we have Tidal logged in and Tidal is currently supported. We've got SoundCloud and Beatport link and BeatSource coming soon on these players. But as you can see here, we're in Tidal. It's as simple as just toggling back and forth between your device and the streaming service. You can go into playlists that you've already pre-prepared in the streaming service. And then a really neat feature is you can go into things like genres and you can scroll up and down genres and think, okay, I'm playing a gig tonight that they're gonna want lots of Latin music. Let me go into the Latin option and go into playlists and best of Latin 2019. And straight away, you've got all these songs that you can choose from. And even if you're not a Latin DJ, you can still, you know, appease a crowd, play to a crowd that maybe you wouldn't usually play to just by having that streaming integration. So that's one of the biggest things that I love about having streaming services there. It's also worth noting that when you load a track in from streaming, it actually stores it, it caches it, and it has to download the song so that, say for example, you lose internet connectivity, it's not going to suddenly stop the track playing. It's cached it in the player so that it will continue playing, you can still use those performance features, and yeah, it means you're not gonna have en any interruptions regardless of what happens with the internet when that track's playing. Also, once it has downloaded, you can set up hot cues, you can set up loops, you can prepare that music, and it will store that information to your USB or SD device that you've got plugged in. So if you go and then take that and plug it into another player somewhere else and play that same song from the streaming service, all of those, all of that preparation, the hot cues, the loops, they're going to appear instantaneously. Another performance feature I just want to highlight at this stage to showcase how powerful the engine OS is, is the key shifting and key syncing feature. So when we're in this play mode here, if we just tap the key up here, which can be shown in either Camelot or Classical, we can tap it and you can see we can just toggle up and down by 12 semitones to, you know, either do some performance techniques or just match the key of the other side. Now, if you want to sync the key of the other side, it's as simple as having something else playing. And then we can just hold the key button, the key reset button here. And you'll see, oh, let me just go back here. And you'll see it moves by minus one semitone to match one A and one A. So it means that you can now mix in key really easily by activating the key sync. Lastly on the screen, it's really tactile. So if you want to zoom in and out the waveform, it's just pinch to zoom in and out. As you can see there, we've got a quantize button just here. Um, you can basically touch anything on the screen and it works just like I said, like an iPad. It's very interactive. We can scroll through the overview waveform um, to different points in the song. 
We've also got a search feature there where you can search using a QWERTY keyboard through your USB device or in Tidal, for example, or other streaming platforms. The players themselves actually have two layers as well. So we have decks A and B. We've got layers that we can switch between there. So you can see it switches to 2B or just 2. There's two outputs on the back which then go into the mixer so you can use two separate channels on the mixer just with one player. So you're basically getting two players in one. You can mix between two tracks very easily just by switching between the layers. These layers can sync up together. All of the performance pads will change depending on what layer you're on and they will correlate to that layer, for example. So really neat feature. Again, it's something that was on the SC5000, but it's one of the biggest selling points, I would say, of the Denon DJ Prime, SC6000 Prime. The players are highly adaptable as well. So we have a shortcuts button here. Like I mentioned before, we can change the color as well as Q-loop quantization, things like how sync mode set up, the brightness of the screen, the player number, all of that stuff is nicely activated and um, accessed within the shortcuts right there. There's also utility if we hold down the view button. You can see we've got all these utility settings. These are things like how to set up the Wi-Fi and your Wi-Fi settings. There's nudge sensitivity on the jog wheels, which changes how, if you nudge it, how it responds. Obviously, we've got the actual tension adjust here, but you can set this up, really fine-tune it to your preference. We've got track preview, which I showed you earlier. Um, this is where you would sign into different streaming platforms. As you can see, we've got Tidal on there. And then we've also got preferences with an absolute abundance of things that you can change to your DJ style and your preference. They really can change everything within this unit and set it up to your preference. Those preferences can then be saved to your drive, so don't worry about going and sticking your drive in another player. You can load those preferences up so the player all adapts to how you like to have it set up. Now we're just going to take a really quick look at the X1850. This is an incremental upgrade from the X1800. Um, the X1800 is discontinued, so this is what is going to be the standard that is in line with the SC6000s. And if you're buying SC5000s, which are still available to purchase, you can get the X1850 along with that as well. Now, this is a full four-channel mixer. I just want to run through some of the updated things from the X1800, so you're aware. My favorite thing in this update has got to be actually the tension in the up faders. It's an important thing, and you know, they just feel much nicer now and there's a nice bit of tension to them so that's a really welcomed update from myself there are two new effects in there we've got pumper and echo hold so if you're used to the x1800 there are two extra effects in there there is an fx quantize feature as well so you can access that in the utility by holding this button and we can go down to fx and you'll see we have the fx quantize there so that means it will lock the effects and play them in time with the grid of the music, obviously, as long as you've got it linked into the mixer. So again, another nice, neat feature that's been added to this upgrade. We've also got a three quarter beat effect parameter now, um, which can be accessed here, as well as a MIDI clock on the back, which you can then sync up to like an external drum machine and it will send the BPM data to that drum machine. So you can add that into your live performances, for example. It's also worth noting that the IEC port on the back is now locking, just like the players, so we don't have any accidents with the mixer turning off um, and the cable being ripped out. And another thing that you can't necessarily see on this mixer, but underneath these filters, the sound has been improved from the X1800, so that's another new feature to be aware of. Again, we all use filters when we're mixing, so it's nice to know that we've got some upgraded sound there as well. And lastly, just like the look of the players has massively improved. The aesthetics of the mixer has improved as well. We've got the nice sleek map design, the black design here. The increments that have been printed on for like your EQ controls have been spaced out a bit more, they're easier to read, and it just looks a lot cleaner in general. So there we have a full prime series, the SC6000M, the SC6000, and the X1850 all work nice and seamlessly together and they all go hand in hand. So there we have it, an in-depth look at this new Denon Prime range. Now, quickly let me just give you the prices of these things. So the SC6000 comes in at 1499, the SC6000M comes in at 1699 and the X1850 comes in at 1099. So very, very competitive. You're getting a lot for your money just thinking about you've got two players in one. You've got two layers you can't go wrong there. So they're the prices. Now, where it sits in the industry. So I think these updates 
are going to be welcomed by a lot of DJs. I mentioned it earlier in this review, but just the look alone, that was one of the big things for me when I saw these. It really made me feel like I wanted to DJ on them, that I wanted the, to see them in booths, that I wanted to see them in clubs. Um, and I think that's going to make a big impact for Denon and for the future of these players. I'm also really excited about having the Wi-Fi streaming in there as well as standard. Um, I think a lot of mobile and event DJs are really going to make use of that straight away. And Honestly, in the future, I can see streaming coming to booths in clubs around the world. It's something that I've tested personally and played with streaming such as Tidal in a live environment. And it just opened up so many more possibilities when I'm playing to a varied crowd. I can reach for that and just find any track that I want. So I think that's going to be a big thing to watch out for uh, with the future of these players too. I just want to mention as well that if you do own an SC5000 or SC5000M, then don't worry, just because these players have been developed and um, announced and they're coming out, you're not going to get forgotten about. You're not going to get left in the dark. The engine OS operating system that's in there is going to be updated across all the Denon ecosystems. So you're still going to get updates, you're still going to get support. Um, this doesn't change any of that. If you are looking at something like the SC5000, it is still available to buy, and that is 1099. So again, still amazing value considering the, the operating system that's in there and the technology that's in these units. So that's just something to bear in mind. You've got two options there, the SC5000 and the SC6000. The SC5000M is going to be discontinued, so your option for the, the, the real vinyl feel with the motorized platter is going to be the SC6000M um, and the X. 1800 is going to be discontinued as well so we're looking at the x1850 now if you're purchasing new now obviously i'm out here in fort lauderdale with the denon team they've run me through all of the features on here you know really showed us these products to the full potential but you know i've only had an hour or so two hours on this equipment so i'm really excited to get some in the studio in in the next few months and to keep deep diving into them and keep playing on them creating performances you know following the updates and and showcasing with you what's going to happen with the future of these players i'd love to know in the comments below what you think about this release if you think you know these are going to take your money and you're going to purchase a set or what you'd like to see in future updates as well Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff to help us keep making more videos like this. And I'll see you in another video very soon.